Hey everybody, welcome to the seven immediate action steps to starting your post-pageant career plan. My name is Tim Tialdo, and if you're listening to this, that means that you are somebody who is an action taker, so this audio is going to be incredibly beneficial for you, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So let's talk about one of the things that is honestly one of, if not the most important things that you can do before you move forward in your life. Matter of fact, the top 3% of all high achievers do this. What do you think it is? They plan. And planning is essentially just getting organized. So for many of us, you know, we generally don't tend to be the types of personalities that have neatly organized filing cabinets. Everything in our homes isn't perfectly spaced out, and we certainly don't set up each and every day in advance with an hour-by-hour plan of what we're going to accomplish. Now, some of you might be, don't get me wrong, but the majority of us, we're creatives. I'm one of those. And we tend to be all over the place sometimes. So the good news is that you can learn to plan, and I'm living proof. And if you really want to get to the top or you at least want to take the next successful steps in your journey, then you're going to have to learn how to do this. But the good news is I'm about to teach you how. There's an old adage that I read that says, before you can do anything, you have to do something else first. So what I'm saying here is that before you can move forward, you have to prepare yourself to move forward. Now, having dreams and goals is great, but if you don't map out a plan of how you're going to get there, it's kind of like steering a ship with no rudder. You have no idea where you'll end up, and you'll end up beached and stranded somewhere. And as some of you have probably already figured out, uncertainty in any part of our lives is a scary feeling. So this is how I can help you, for the most part, avoid that feeling. Now, if you look back over your life at the major mistakes that you've made, and we all make them, you probably find that they have all stemmed from one of two factors. Number one, you either rushed into something without thinking about it first, Or number two, you didn't have enough information beforehand to make a good decision, but you went ahead and did it anyway. Now, I'm fully willing to admit that for many years, I was the guy who thought that he didn't need to plan. I thought my talent, my drive, my sheer will to succeed were more than enough to get me to where I wanted to be. And you know what? I was dead wrong. And I ended up for a time beached and stranded financially, emotionally, and professionally. So I'm telling you this as a friend so that you don't have to go through what I went through. It's not fun, it does hurt, and it certainly doesn't get you any closer to your goals any quicker. But I was really lucky because finally a mentor of mine gave me a stern talk and he said, you know what, Tim, if you don't start getting organized, if you don't start writing down your goals and planning your path, you not only won't succeed, but you're going to be coming back to me in 10 years broke and depressed and I'll only be able to say, you know what, Tim, I told you so. So he put his finger in my face and he said, swallow your pride, suck it up, and do this. I'm telling you this as a friend. And never again did I not plan. And it's been one of the best things that I could have ever done. The Life After the Crown podcast, for instance, was completely planned out before we ever started talking about it. So if you want a good example of what planning can do, the podcast that I'm doing right now is a perfect example. So here's an interesting little statistic. Did you know that for every minute spent planning, it actually accounts for 10 minutes saved of execution time? So that's a 1,000% return on your time when you plan. So you can see right up front how that would not only help you achieve your goals, but help with the time management and efficiency as well. So let's go ahead and get down to business and learn how to go about planning for your future. First, got to create your vision and dream some big dreams. If you're not going to be thinking exponentially larger than where you currently are, you're not going to have much to plan for. So before you even start writing anything down, figure out what your ultimate goal is. And don't you dare sell yourself short. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how much money you don't have. And it certainly doesn't matter what kind of family you were raised in. It all starts in your mind. And until you give birth to a dream, you've got no target to shoot for or plan for. So I want you to think outrageous. Think big, crazy dreams and then write down on a sheet of paper what that ultimate goal will be. I mean, what is it that you really, really want? Write that down. Now, you got to ask yourself a few questions. Number one, what is the specific result that you're committed to achieving? When you're clear about the specific result you want to achieve, you focus on it all the time. And what you see begin to happen is that your behavior changes instantly because you know what you're after and then you're energized to go after it. 
Question number two is, why do you want to do this? You know, it's one thing to say, for instance, uh, I want to become a network TV host. But it's another thing to add a purpose to it by saying, you know, I want to become a network TV host because I want to take care of my family, because I want to make a difference in the world, because I want to be an example to other people, and because I want to prove to all the naysayers that I can do it. You see, when you add some purpose to your goals, it adds emotion to your meaning, and it drives you with a deep fire inside. So ask yourself, why do I want to pursue this career path so much? Question number three is what is your action plan? This is where you start to see things taking shape because it's your map to get there. So what are these specific things that you need to do in order to achieve this dream? To help you get yours started, let me give you an example of my map for the Life After the Crown podcast. So here's how I started. I needed a guide to creating a podcast, so I went out and I bought a few books on the process of creating them online, formatting, where to post them, how, etc., Number two, I needed to make a preliminary list of everybody I knew in the pageant industry and also create a list of potential guests that I wanted to book in the first year so I could begin networking and booking interviews. Number three, I wanted to have 10 to 15 interviews booked before I launched the podcast. Uh, Number four, I needed to understand the how and where to post the podcast online for maximum reach, so I needed to do some research on the platforms available and the costs to be able to use those platforms. Number five, I needed to set a launch date. Uh, So I ended up choosing the day after Miss USA, and I also wanted to have 10 to 15 podcasts done and ready to go before I launched that first one. Uh, So that really gave me pad in terms of my time in case I had some weeks where, you know, things got too busy for me to do some podcasts that I would have a bunch uh, ready to go. So I had some leeway in order to, uh, you know, keep going on a weekly basis. Number six, I needed to select my podcast format. Uh, the name, the logo, the music. Um, And I did much of this on uh, two different sites. Uh, So for the music, uh, I used a a site called Envato. uh, And in that, they have something called Audio Jungle. Um, It's all royalty-free music you can choose. So I found it in there. And then a lot of the graphic design. You know, when I chose the name of the podcast, um, I needed to come up with a logo. I did that in Canva. If you've never used Canva, it's great for any, uh, any type of social media posts that you want to make, whether that be on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or wherever, uh, highly recommend it. Number seven, I wanted to have an educational tool to offer people so that in addition to interviews with former title holders and women of influence, that I could give them some tangible tools that would help them moving forward. Now, this audio that you're listening to is actually one of those tools. And one of the other tools that I created, if you ever listen to the podcast, was called the Life After the Crown Starter Guide. So just making sure that not only allowing you to listen to former title holders and women of influence uh, for advice on how to move forward, but also giving you something that could actually help you to physically do so. Uh, Number eight, I needed to have my social media accounts optimized and ready and posts planned out strategically for the launch. And then number nine, I needed to develop a process for contacting and booking guests, editing and posting podcasts, and also a process for how they are marketed. And let me tell you what, if you are planning anything, a process is huge because if you kind of have a template, so to speak, in place, um, you know, in this case, I do a weekly podcast. So every week I'm coming up with all these things in order to produce the podcast, get it out there, market it, uh, contact new guests. Processes are very important, and they also save you a lot of time and headache. Now, once you lay out your list of goals like I just did, what you do is you go back through and you break down each number into tasks. So, for instance, let's uh, take number three. I wanted to have 10 to 15 podcasts booked before I launched. So I made a preliminary list of many of the former title holders that I knew that were influential And then I just reached out to them personally to ask them if they'd be willing to be some of my first guests on the podcast. So once you start breaking down each of your numbers into tasks, you're quickly going to have a pretty good sized list of things to start tackling that will keep you both busy and motivated. Now, when you get a big list of to-dos like that, some people, they get all stressed out and they feel like, you know, I've got way too many things to focus on. And the truth is, most people are only able to focus on a limited number of things at one time. So, for example, when most people learn, statistics have shown that they tend to remember things that are grouped into threes. For instance, most people have three names, a first, a middle, and a last name. 
Most phone numbers are grouped into a series of three numbers, 800-555-1212. Most addresses are chunked into three lines, you know, John Q. Public on 123 Main Street in any town, any state. So what I want to do here is introduce you to something called chunking. This will allow you to set up things in groups of threes and make them seem like much less to accomplish at one time. So all I want you to do after you have your whole list written out is pick three at a time to focus on. Work on those until they're completely finished and then move on to a new three. This will keep you on track and also help you to keep your sanity. I've got two more things to do to round out your plan. The first is you have to commit to something called block time. Now, no plan is worthwhile if you don't put some emotion and action behind it, so you must commit at least an hour or two a day with no distractions to working on these things. That means no cell phone, no music, no TV, no other people in the room. This is 100% focused time. And if you schedule this time each and every day, you're going to find that this will easily be some of the most productive time that you have ever had. Lastly, you've got to measure your progress and celebrate your wins. This is incredibly important to planning for two reasons. Number one, you can't manage what you can't measure. So by checking in on a daily basis or at a minimum on a weekly basis, you're going to know if you're on track. And if you aren't, you're going to be able to see what you need to work on so that you can correct your course a lot more quickly. And then you must keep score of your wins. You can't just go through life accomplishing and giving and experiencing and never celebrate your wins along the way. So stop and appreciate what you've done and enjoy the journey. So to review, here are the seven things that you need to do to execute your plan right now. Number one is create your vision. Number two, figure out what your specific result is. Number three, figure out your whys. Number four, develop your action plan. Number five, chunk your actions into groups of threes. Number six, commit to and schedule block time. And number seven, measure and celebrate your wins. Hey, gang, I hope this has been an educational audio that will help you because I know it did for me, and it truly has changed the way that I approach my entire career. So get to work and don't move on until you do these planning exercises. I guarantee you, you're going to be glad you did. 